So yeah, I was just uh, messing around with the stump and I basically just want to get, I mean, some firewood, but I, I want to get some boards out of it because some of this fur is really nice. I decided maybe I'd try to run this right here and watch this. I mean, I've hit this about seven times already. Okay, that's the easiest way to start these is, is like at the edge. And I can just keep coming in here. This is a short handle, five pound maw. If I muster everything I can to try to really efficiently smash that harder, which I wasn't at full throttle there, it's just gonna just wear me out. I'm already <laughs> worn out. Okay, so the only reason I was gonna do that is because I, I like to get some quarters out of here. But really the smart thing to do, and if you're splitting firewood, especially it's usually not the best idea to try to split big rounds in half. You know, each one of those blows could be a piece of firewood. Instead of beating yourself up, trying to get this split into halves and then quarters, just whittle off the sides as much as you can. If there's a bunch of knots, which this doesn't have, but if there's a bunch of knots, just find a knot and another knot and just go right in between them and try slabbing this stuff off. I'm getting a little close to the edge. Because the problem with this is there's just too much mass. There's, there's two things going on. One is that you have a large surface area, right? So you have all of this times all of that. There's a lot of wood connected together that you're trying to push apart. The other problem is that this is just really massive and this is just really massive. So when the mall's trying to go in there and push those out, it's just really hard for it to do. By whittling down the sides, we whittle away at both of those issues. All the scrap around the edges is already rotten, so. Oops. Well, I screwed that up because I actually wanted that wood. I don't, I'm not very good with the small. I, I actually really, really like the small and I want to get a longer handle on it. And I don't know, it's kind of crooked or maybe I just suck. Blame it on the tool. So most, most of these I don't even have to hit twice and look at how much we're gonna reduce this down to uh, make splitting it in half easier if that's what we need to do because we don't need to do that either. Like unless you're worried that your firewood isn't pretty enough, like, you know, you want like wedges instead of slabs like this, which, you know, God help you if that's the case. Yeah, just this is so much better in most cases when you're splitting large rounds. So now, although it may not be easy, it's gonna be easier. You see that? That's um, wind shake. Maybe the tree was blowing in the wind and it just sheared like this. So between these growth rings, there's literally a space, like it's a crack and it fills with sap. So I know that if I make a board say like right here, it's gonna fall in half right there. So now I, I can take all of this off and reduce it even more. Never hit an unsupported piece of wood on the ground. Never. It's not proper. Yeah, I like this little mall. I wanna get it dialed in. Okay, so now there's hope, right? Now, where's the center? Oh, it's actually right here. Now, it may not be easy. But there it is. God, I'm bad with that aim. Well, there's something, there's something going on over here, like a knot or something. We'll see when we get it open, but you'll see there's something there. Yep, there it is right there. Okay, so now I have these big, beautiful faces. 
that I can slab pieces off, but I don't want to go past the center here. I don't want the center of the tree in there. I want, this is going to be perfect to what a lot of people would refer to as a uh, quarter sawn. Better to just call it vertical grain. So when I get my ax in here or a fro and I split off a slab there, it's going to be perfect vertical grain. It's gorgeous. Block this into a quarter. I have all just the good wood take it home, grab a fro, and start popping boards off of here. All right, I don't know, my aim's so bad, I'm, I'm really hesitant to do this. I'm gonna use the ax. Maybe we should just split a couple boards out of this thing right here. Uh, just because, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Don't tell me. I don't have a, like a wooden maul with me and I don't feel like making one. It's not proper. On the list of things to do, make a wooden maul. Ah, this is beautiful. If the wood splits good enough, like this is, just really, really beautiful, you can probably get away with taking the ax like right here, as long as you're not making really thin boards and tapping it and just follow that and follow it over and follow it over and just keep going just a little deeper each time and you might get a, a perfect slab that doesn't rip off the side and, and taper out and run out. The other safer way to do it is to take bigger chunks. Kind of the rule of thumb is if you can split like half and half, like half the bulk here and half the bulk here, it's much more likely to go straight down and not run in any direction when you split it off. Because, you know, run out is the major problem, that which just means that if I tried to split a board off of this, instead of splitting straight down and staying the same thickness of board all the way down, it would start to tear away as it goes toward the bottom and you'd split off basically like a wedge. Um, but I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to beat on my axe anymore with that maul. God damn it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, this, the axe will survive. I like doing improper things. Just really do not rush it, especially at first, because if you, if you rush it, you might get a crack going off somewhere where you don't want it. Slow and steady wins this race. As soon as I feel it kind of bottom out, I'm going to move. Now I can see the crack running a little down the side of the log. You hear that, that hollow? Listen. Yeah, so with really straight grain, well-behaved woods like this, you can get away with this. But a lot of woods, you will find that that will not work. And the board will run out and it'll rip down to a thin taper on one end and you'll you'll end up with a wedge. In an emergency, if you have to do it, you can just make the board thicker, let it run out, and then, you know, chop it down to the right size. But this is just, that is just gorgeous. Like, a, I could probably make a breadboard out of that thing. And I already split off a bunch of sapwood that was kind of rotten. Yeah, so as much as I want to keep doing that, I don't want to mess my axe up too bad. So just remember if you're splitting large rounds, there's so many times when it's just not, even like medium large rounds, not worth uh, trying to split them in half or quarters, but just, you can just keep going around the edge. I mean, I, I didn't need to stop going around the edge for any reason, um, except that I'm trying to save this, this wood. So uh, yeah, try it. 